and welcome to another educational video about screen printing by Catspit Productions. Thanks for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel if you like my videos, you like the tips, the advice, the information, maybe a little bit of the humor. If you enjoy that, please make sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel today. You don't know how much it means to me. It helps me stay motivated, it keeps me going, and it actually really does help me grow on YouTube. So it's a free way for you to give a little bit back to help me out for you know all the free information I give. If you appreciate that, you enjoy it, you like it, so help me out a little bit and hit the subscribe button right now. Thanks, I really appreciate it, seriously. Okay, so today we're going to do the LED video that I've been meaning to do for a couple weeks now. And, you know, I had some things going on in the office and in the shop. We had some damage. We had some construction, you know, so it's been a little bit crazy. So um, today, finally, we're just going to burn a couple of screens. So I'm using the house dressing, as I call it. It's Saudi Textile PC Blue and we're on the brand new 23 by 31 Ranar LED exposure unit with the vacuum top, okay? And we're gonna burn uh, the Ben Franklin halftone because I have that film positive, so we'll do that. It's a 45 line per inch halftone at a 15 degree angle. We'll probably do that on a 200 or 230 mesh, maybe 230, hopefully I have one in my box, okay? And uh, then we'll do the Cat Spit Secret Society logo, a spot color logo, Okay, so we're already in darkroom mode here. I converted to darkroom mode, and the first thing I'm gonna do, of course, is clean the glass, right? And this is, like I said, it's an LED unit. So this thing has, uh, what, three, six, seven strips of focused, these are focused LED lights, so it's not scattering around, even though it has multiple bulbs. The, the little LED bulbs themselves are focused in a parallel type of situation. So even though you could call this a multiple bulb source, it has very parallel light, okay? And so it gives great detail, much like or better perhaps than a point source unit because this also is at about 400 nanometers uh, wavelength for, you know, it cures the emulsion really good. Okay, so now, pardon me, I've got my film positives. We're going to do um, the way this unit works. It has a safety so that the lights can't come on, but you do have, you know, viewing lights that probably goofed up the exposure real nice. <laughs> and uh, you do have manual ways to control the light, okay, and the vacuum, of course. But... Uh, if you put this on auto and hit the switch, it'll do everything, you know, by itself. But I like to engage the vacuum first. So what I'm going to do, let's do the, the um, little cat spit design first. Okay. So I can choose like a 110 or something. pull out a screen and take a look at it, make sure, you know, it's halfway decent to use. I think this one's a 125 or something. All right, so I can just eyeball this today. We're not too concerned with anything except how well does it expose? How well of an exposure are we gonna get? But I already have been working with this and I'm at about 10 seconds exposure time with Textile PC Blue, Saudi, which I sell on my e-commerce site. Whoops, don't drop your screen on the glass. And um, so that's it, we're, we're set. Let's do this exposure. What I'm gonna do is we're gonna expose both screens and then we'll go over to the washout booth and wash them out one after the other. So let's expose this one and then I'm gonna put it back in the cabinet and hopefully remember which one it is. <laughs> okay, and then uh, we're gonna expose the Ben Franklin one and put it in the cabinet and then we're gonna, you know, we'll wash them out together. Okay, so let's see here. I got this in here without breaking my glass. <laughs> and so you can latch it if you want. It has this latch here. You can latch 
And uh, at this point, I use the vacuum. This unit has a vacuum, basically a uh, like a you know a shop vac motor. But uh, I do believe in the future we're going to offer some models with a vacuum, a real vacuum pump, so that it's quiet if you so desire. But right now, it's a standard uh, you know type of uh, vacuum blower motor that you would find in a uh, shop vac. So it's a little noisy, but it does the job well for the price. Okay, so. What I'm going to do is I'm going to engage the vacuum. I'm going to make sure it's, it you know, sandwiches really nice. And then I'm going to hit the exposure for 10 seconds. Okay, so when, when you're, the exposure is done and the light goes off, that was a 10 second exposure. It's really fast. Um, you want to let the vacuum release. Don't try to open it up prematurely because it can actually pull the glass up with it. And that's why there's a little safety tab here on the Ranar units. We have this little safety tab, but you really you know, need to remember not to do that. All right, so let's put this one aside. Now I'm looking for uh, the proper mesh count. Let's see, here's a 230. Okay, so let me take a look. I always look at them, I hold them up uh, in the, um, against the safe light to take a look and see that, you know, there's not like a bunch of lint and stuff that might be in the way or something. Who knows? You know, I mean, even me, that's right. Even cat spit coats a few screens that turn out useless. <laughs> it happens. Okay. All right, so I'm going to put this in the sweet spot pretty much as much as I can. Uh, maybe a little bit up high because we don't want to affect the print height, right? on the press. So the sweet spot is the center of the screen, as you know from watching my previous videos, right? <laughs> I have a video on this, the sweet spot. But I want it up a little bit so it's not too low. And this is a one color half tone. So again, I can eyeball it. You know, no big deal. It's a big piece of film, so I'll probably use four pieces of tape here. Okay, and hopefully my film positive, it's, I use it for teaching now, so hopefully it's not in too poor of a condition, you know, but okay, so I have it taped on there. All right, and now this time we're going to try to put the screen in without banging my glass or possibly breaking it. You always want to be careful because the glass can scratch from the, the screen action, so you really want to be gentle and careful. Okay, good. All right, close the top. Now, this is a 230 mesh. This is a 230 mesh, and yes, it is dyed yellow. And a lot of the times you'll note that people will, you know, oh, it's dyed mesh, and the dyed mesh is going to absorb a little light. And we want to, you know, add a little bit of exposure time for that. But in, in my experience, a lot of the time, because the 230 mesh, the higher mesh counts hold a lot less emulsion, I don't really need to tweak my exposure all that much. So. Let's find out today if that's the case. So I'm going to try this at 10 seconds, the same exposure time that I did for the spot color on, on the 125 mesh. And this is that Ben Franklin half tone, 45 line per inch, 15 degree angle, okay, on a 230 mesh. Saudi Ken Textile PC Blue, 10 seconds. Let's see what happens. Yeah, so it's a really fast exposure. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this one right in here like this. And let's go uh, to the washout booth setup and we'll wash out the spot color first and then this one and, and we'll see what happens. All right, so as usual, the first thing you want to do is wet down the screen on both sides and the latent image is going to show up. I'm going to turn on the, the light and it's probably going to mess up the exposure and stuff. But the idea is that this should wash out pretty quickly. And if it doesn't, you know, that's a sign of problems in the exposure. So let's see how quick this washes out.
nice, washes out easy, really good. And one of the things that I've noticed is that the, you know, the inkwell side is way less underexposed. Okay, so this one should wash out pretty quickly, I think, because again, it's holding a lot less emulsion. So most of the time for me, the higher mesh counts wash out, you know, a little bit easier, a little faster. All right, so we're gonna wet it down on both sides, turn on the light and go for it and try to do it and be done with it as fast as possible. Look close up, make sure I'm happy with it. Again, it looks like there was a little piece of something on my film. I didn't, you know, I didn't check this because we're not actually printing anything. And I, I use these film positives to teach now. So they're a little bit abused, but um, other than that one little spot, things are looking pretty good. Not bad. So I would stop right there because, you know, that's it. I can see. Everything is washed out that I want, and you know, as you know, with something like this, the more you keep working it, right, the more likely we are to push off some of the dot or detail or what have you. Okay, so let me let this dry out. I think the uh, LED units are awesome, and they do a really good job uh, with exposing the emulsion fully and most completely through the entire layer from the portion that comes in contact with the glass and the film positive all the way through to the inkwell side. So there's very little scumming or filming, if any at all, for underexposed emulsion on the inkwell side and you shouldn't have any problems with clogging from that. And you know, it, it definitely gives you very high resolution. There's no doubt about it. There's very little to no undercutting because your exposure times are so short and the LED light source is very clean. It's uh, tuned, dialed into the emulsion, that, uh, the light that it wants to see. And it's, it's very parallel despite the fact that there's multiple little bulbs. Each little bulb is focused in a, in a way to emit the light straight up. So they you know, the LED units are eventually going to replace the point source units. I think that's what you're going to see in the industry because they're cheaper to buy, they're cheaper to run, and they work just as good. Okay, so here's a little closer. This is 125 mesh, 70 mic, 125, 70 mic, um, white mesh, textile, Saudi chem, textile, PC blue, 10 second exposure. Here's the Ben Franklin halftone. It's a one color halftone with spot colors. And this was a 45 line per inch halftone, 15 degree angle on a 230 mesh. And it's yellow dyed mesh. And you can see the spot colors came out great. And the halftone came out excellent as well. And you know, the moray that you might see there is because of the camera, okay? <laughs> so, uh, but it came out really good. There's no more A visible to me here in the shop. And uh, let's see if we can do a close-up. Again, this is, like I said, 10 second exposure, Saudi chem textile PC blue, dyed yellow mesh. It's the same exposure time that I did the white mesh at. I just, you know, because there's so much less emulsion, it's just, you know, they, it, they just, you, you know, it, it's not always necessary to adjust the exposure time. <laughs> so I have a little stuttering uh, problem there. So, um, you know, it just depends and you have to see how it works out for you. You might have to adjust the exposure time and you might not. It just depends. I don't have to in my shop. I run, uh, you know, 110 all the way through 160 white mesh. I run it the same for 200 through 230 mesh, um, you know, Pretty much the same exposure time. Here's an extreme close-up of the eye area. This is a good area so that you can see, you know, how well defined the dot is and how well, you know, it washed out. 
okay? And I think the 400 nanometer bandwidth, or not bandwidth, wavelength, uh, the 400 nanometer wavelength is just so uh, good at curing the emulsion. You know, it's so dialed in that I think it makes it easier, it's not only easier to get the exposure off with, uh, you know, photopolymer emulsion, but I think the, you know, the detail and the crispness, the resolution of the shorter exposure time combined with the LED light source, which is very high quality, I think it, you know, it produces a, uh, a finer stencil. It's really good. I, I'm, I'm very happy with upgrading to the LED and you know originally I did it for the showroom you know I I, I wanted to do it for myself too but uh, it was a business decision but now that I have it for my use personally <laughs> I'm like really happy you know so I love the LED exposure unit it's awesome that's it for today's video I hope you appreciated this demonstration of the Ranar LED XPL 2331 Please remember that I sell screen printing equipment and supplies at catspitscreenprintsupply.com online and right here in Phoenix, Arizona, you can come into the Catspit storefront and take a look at the Ranar LED exposure unit in person. It's right here in the shop for you to take a look at if you so desire. So please remember that I do sell screen printing equipment and supplies online and in Phoenix. Check out my websites for the hours of operation and of course the location of the storefront. Thanks a lot for clicking on my video today. I really appreciate your time and attention. Please subscribe if you appreciate the tips and advice I give you. Please subscribe today and of course, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.